I do not aspire necessarily to be accepted by quote unquote mainstream. Mm. And if my opinions offend the mainstream, then so be it. I've been fortunate enough, brother, to have to have been able to speak my mind. Mm. And in, in most cases, particularly among my people, among our people, uh, it, it's been uh, at the worst palatable. But uh, I'm pretty much in line with, with mainstream black America. Yeah. We have this, um, and kind of even just touching on that, conversation that is happening kind of right now on our platform. Alex Thomas was on our platform and he talked about his plight where he did a lot of black movies yeah. and his wanting as an artist to transition to, you know, more mainstream content. Um, he, the way he expressed it maybe didn't come off as clear, but I understood him trying to be an artist to touch a little bit of everything. Did you um, have that same type of dream or aspiration or are you just like how do you view being someone in the black America you can say as it has been said that I'm a victim of low aspirations brother mm. I have no desire even to this day and I was on grace under fire which was a quote unquote mainstream show and to translate mainstream it means acceptable to white people I ain't got, I got nothing against anybody but as in my radio show, one of my captions is, I got no hate for anybody, but I got no fear. I do not aspire necessarily to be accepted by quote unquote mainstream. Mm. And if my opinions offend the mainstream, then so be it. I've never curtailed my shows to accommodate mainstream and I do some mainstream clubs but they have to either accept accept me for what I have to say or not. I've never wanted to uh, to borrow. I've never wanted to carry my enthusiasm mm -hmm. about being black to accommodate somebody who's not. Mm -hmm. Just uh, and so, if you want to be, if you want to cross cultural lines and all that. You can adjust yourself to do that. Mm -hmm. My philosophy is let the people who are receptive to other cultures cross the line and understand where I'm coming from. Listen to me. I'm not making no adjustment. You make the adjustment. So, you know, it's 350 million or so people in, in America. I don't need all of them to like me, which would never happen anyway. I don't care what you do. Mm. How competitive was it to get on Comic View? Well, it was competitive for a lot of people. A lot of people were striving to do that. Right. But even back then, when I talked about my aspirations, I've never said, I want to do this, I want to do that. I've always been about the craft. And fortunately, and I'm not bragging, I'm just saying, this is how it happened. They came to get me. I never sent, I never sent nothing. I okay. never submitted anything. I was working on my craft. I was going from club to club, sometimes four or five clubs. And one night, man, night after night, I should have said this first. I shouldn't have said that. And I was developing my character, and they came to me, I actually, for the record, I actually refused to do it uh, mm. two or three years in a row before I finally said, all right. Why? Well, I don't think I was ready. And then there was a little old, little monetary thing, you know. They said, DZ, fly yourself out here. And I was like, man, I wish I would. <laughs> Which I probably should. But I see, probably that's what I mean. That's the, not like that. I don't know. That's the business acumen and the intelligence. Because some of your Well, you tell the intelligent, you can call it not so intelligent. You know, I mean, it was only on talking about, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars. But I was just, uh, so I think it's more than, I think it's more, uh, you might call it ego or what have you, but mm. I just thought they should pay for it. 
which yeah. why would they? I wasn't nothing. But they the ones that asked me to come, you know. Don't ask me out on a date and then say we going Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Drive yourself here. <laughs> but That's I'm a good glad way of looking I finally at it. did it. Uh, For sure. Now, you would end up, be, you know, becoming a name on Comic View. You did Deaf Comedy Jam as well. Yeah. You would end up becoming a name. Now, I have to ask, was there any reason why you weren't in the conversation with the Kings of Comedy when they start piecing that together? I had a conversation with... Uh, okay. Lathan one time and Walter Lathan, that's the gentleman who uh produced it and created it. Just yeah. for the for the for the audience that doesn't know. Yeah. But it's not something that I was going after, but the conversation seemed to be uh at that time D L had a television show. Mm -hmm. Steve had a television show. Mm -hmm. Cedric was on Steve's show mm -hmm. and he had the Bernie Mac show. So other than the warm-up acts and so forth, they took brothers who had television shows at the moment. So I didn't have a problem with it. I really would have had a conflict, and I'm not saying this in just anything. I would have had a conflict philosophically mm. because I don't consider myself anybody's king. Mm. Okay. I've heard that conversation before. Not in that context, but more so of they were calling themselves the original kings of comedy. And yeah. people were being offended by that because yeah. they felt like priors, you know, your priors, your uh, Carlins, and other guys were the original kings of comedy. Well, I'm not mad at them. You know, you can call yourself anything you want. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and most of the people, uh, the, the artists, you know, you, you know, you got some haters out there. Whatever they call it, you always would have had some. Yeah. But my personal feeling is. Uh, would I would I have done it if I had been offered it? Of course. Mm -hmm. But I got a little a, a little uncomfortable considering myself. I, I, I'm, no, I'm no king of comedy, bro. 